Okay, I think we're good on our Wellingtons. We'll clean up our board a little bit. Let's flip over our filet mignons. Getting them nice and brown. Duke cell is looking wonderful. Shallots are cooked nice and tender. Mushrooms have released their liquid and yet have dried back up. We are just about set. While those fillets are cooking, I'm going to spread a little bit of the pate right on the outer surface of the fillet. And that side will be the side that I put down on the puff pastry. The best type of pate to use for this, of course, is pate de foie gras. Very expensive and maybe a little bit out of your budget. Nevertheless, if you can afford to use it, it certainly makes the dish a whole lot better. Okay. I want to just flip these fillets over. Bob, can I have a half a piece of parchment paper out of the drawer there? We'll leave this fan running for a sec so that we can clear whatever smoke we have created. Now, if you don't like pate, don't stress over this recipe. Just don't put it in. Do the filet exactly the way I've shown you. Do the mushroom duxel. I know I'll have people asking me, but what if I don't like mushrooms? What can I substitute? Whatever you can saute down with a little bit of shallot. Will it be the classic beef wellington? No, but perhaps you prefer zucchini, so you chop zucchini fine and saute it with a little shallot. It will be wonderful. Now we take our other piece of puff pastry and we are going to rub a tiny bit of olive oil all around the edge. You can use an egg wash also, but because I didn't pull out an egg, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of olive oil. What I'm trying to do is create a little bit of moisture here so that I can glue one side to the other. puff pastry all around and pinch it right down and then we're going to pinch these edges all the way around like a wonderful little dumpling or empanada or whatever you're used to seeing in this shape that you can connect to this. one. Stretching this out just a tiny bit more. And then we're pinching this all around. You can roll these out a little bit bigger and get fancy and cut them with a nice cutter. That leaves a little scalloped edge. Sometimes I like to leave things a little bit rustic. It gives that more country feel to it. Barb, we can shut down that fan, I think. 
And there are our little Wellingtons. So now we're going to place them on a sheet with parchment paper, hang off our surface a little bit, and we're going to pop these right in the oven. I've got a preheated oven. Okay, fillets are ready to go, and now we're going to work on our eggplant. That's I'm done with this. Need a dish for our eggplant. A little more olive oil, and again, I can't say this enough, I'm sautéing with regular olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil tends to give a bitter flavor when I'm sautéing, so I always elect to use regular olive oil. And then I add the extra virgin olive oil as a drizzle when I'm done, which creates a really nice um, flavor on top that's, that's untouched and, and it's in its most natural state. I'm going to lay out these pieces of eggplant so I can just salt and pepper them before I sauté them. No special pattern. I know people ask me questions like, well, when you laid that out, you did it a certain way. Did that make a difference? Now we're doing rustic cooking here. Our oil is heating up. Put our eggplants in. off here. Now the eggplant appetizer, I want to use some wilted arugula on that as well. Now because I'm sauteing my eggplant for the same dish, there's no reason why I can't use this same saute pan for my arugula. If I see my eggplant sucking up the olive oil, I'm just simply going to add a tiny bit more. It's always easier to add it than to take it out if you are swimming in it. can't tell you how wonderful this was growing up as a kid, having just plain eggplant sautéed in olive oil, a little salt and pepper over the top, and a drizzle of some extra virgin olive oil. My wife sometimes likes to put a little bit of uh, very fine balsamic vinegar on top. or looking about done. Put a couple more in. Notice as I'm taking them out, I'm adding more, trying to stabilize the temperature of the pan. The surprise for this class is that when I'm done with this, I'm going to make some fresh mozzarella. Not entirely from scratch because we have the curd already made. But mozzarella has always been a big mystery to people. And we'd like to um, help to unlock that mystery a bit and show you just how it's done in the Italian stores. There's a real, um, real style in doing it. And different places make different shapes. But for the most part, you can usually always find the loaf and the braid. 
Um, braid is a little bit more challenging to do. 